Okay, this is part three of the convolution of two rectangular pulses. And to uh, summarize, we're at the point where we have, um, according to our picture, uh, the shifted version of H is uh, completely overlapping the uh, X. Okay, and we discovered that in that case, the area is always one. Now the question is, what values of t does this hold for? How do we know when this is going to happen as opposed to something else? Well, up here we have that this is t, and in order for the right edge of the shifted and flipped h to be to the right of this value 1, we need to have t is greater than 1. Okay? That's basically saying that the right edge of h is to the right of the right edge of x. And for the left edge of h to be to the left edge, or be to the left of the edge of x, we need t minus 3 to be less than 0. And we can work this out to get t is less than 3. So we combine these two results, and we have that t uh, between 1 and 3. If this is true, that means that h of, or the convolution of these two guys is 1. So we can add that to our list of uh, results. 1 is less than t, which is less than 3. Okay. So, we're at the point where we know what happens when t is less than 0, we know what happens when t is greater than 4, and we know what happens when t is between 1 and 3. So really all we need to figure out is what happens when t is between 0 and 1, and what happens when t is between 3 and 4. Um, so I guess let's, uh, let's look at the case of first what happens when t is between 0 and 1. So we'll clean up this mess. And we'll redraw our x. Okay, so again this is x of tau, and now we're going to assume that t is between 0 and 1. Okay, so again to do that we take the right edge of our flipped h and move that to some point t, which is between 0 and 1. That means that the rest of h is going to look something like this. It goes out to t minus 3. Okay, so again, this is our h of t minus tau. Okay. So, and again, just to make clear what we've done, this has gone to t, this guy now has gone all the way out here to t minus 3. Okay, well clearly where x is equal to 0, the product's going to be 0, and that happens for all these values of tau less than 0, and out here. And we also have that h is 0 for values of tau greater than t. Okay. So the product of x and h now looks something like this. Okay, and so I get the area under this thing. And to do that, I recognize that again, this is a 1, or a height of 1. And this guy here, between 0 and and t has a width of t. So the area of this rectangle is going to be t. And 
we've said that this, uh, well, we, we chose a value of t between 0 and 1. And you can see that basically this holds for any value of t between 0 and 1. The picture is essentially the same. The only thing that changes if I make t bigger, for example, the, well, here we'll choose another color to ugly this up with. If I make t bigger, then the area increases. If I make t smaller, then the area decreases. So the answer we have here that this area is equal to t makes sense. The bigger t is, the larger the area is, the smaller t is, um, the less the or the uh, smaller the area is. So we now have another another thing to put here. So between 0 and 1, we have that x and h convolved equals t. Okay, isn't this great? So the last thing we need to do, the last area that we haven't looked at, is when t is between 3 and 4. So let's clean all this stuff up. Draw x one more time. getting better at drawing x. So this is x. And now let's take our um, our shift or our flipped version of h and move it to a value of t out here where t is um, less than 4 and greater than 3. So this edge is being moved out here. If we do this then, actually draw what happens to h, you'll notice this point out here is t minus 3. And if t is between 3 and 4, then t minus 3 falls between 0 and 1. Okay, so hopefully at this point you can kind of see what's going to happen because I'm going to go faster here. Everywhere that x is 0, the product is 0. And it turns out then that the only place the product is not 0 is right here from t minus 3 to 1. So basically I'm going to have an area that um, is going to have a width of 1 minus t minus 3. Okay, that's, that's the width of this guy over here. Because again, uh, it goes from 1 over to t minus 3, and the height is going to be 1. So I can uh, do a little bit of algebra here. I'll make sure it's clear. I multiply this by the height, and doing a little bit of algebra, I get that this is equal to 4 minus t. Okay. So I have 4 minus t. And this picture holds whenever t is between 3 and 4. So I have t between 3 and 4 implies that the convolution is equal to 4 minus t. Okay, so we're almost done. In fact, in some sense you could say we're done, but the last thing we need to do is uh, graph the convolved x with conv the h, or con graph h and x convolved, and uh, see what it looks like and see if we can come to any conclusions. But I'm essentially out of time on this video, 
So we'll do one more video, which leads us to the exciting graphing conclusion.